Lisa, you're an astrophysicist but also an author. Could you yeah. tell me how those two worlds go together? Well, I didn't think they did until recently, but you know what? Doing science and learning about the universe means that I also get to talk to a lot of young people and uh, they ask the most amazing questions and I'm always thinking, wow, I'd love to write a book to sort of give all these answers out to everyone. So I ended up writing a kid's book, Under the Stars, Astrophysics for Bedtime, and it's just all about the amazing universe that we live in. So why is bedtime a good time to learn about astrophysics? Well, it's dark for a start. Let's hope you're going to bed in the dark. And, and I think after a long day and you get in bed tucked up and you start to relax and you start to think about things, things bigger than you, big concepts. And I think there's nothing bigger than the universe and the stars and thinking about the 200 billion stars in our Milky Way galaxy. Black holes, what would happen if you fell into one? Maybe you wouldn't sleep very well. But anyway, you know, all those things are just incredible. And I think nighttime's a wonderful time to settle down and think about our place in the universe. Great. Yeah, so what are some of your other favourite astrophysics stories to tell? Well, I love thinking about shooting stars because most people think they're actually stars because they're called shooting stars, right? But they're not actually. In fact, they're tiny bits of space dust. And uh, we're not talking about the dust that you hoover up in your your house, but we're talking about the dust that lives in space. It's leftover stuff from when the solar system was formed from all the gas and dust. Now, that stuff's floating around space. The Earth is moving through space as the Earth orbits the sun throughout the year. Mm -hmm. So when that space dust gets hit by the Earth, the dust falls into our atmosphere, gets really, really hot by the force of friction. Rub your hands together. What happens? It gets hot. Yeah, it gets hot because of Friction. Friction. <laughs> and that's what happens with the space dust. It whizzes through the atmosphere, rubs against the pieces, the little molecules of air made of nitrogen and oxygen and carbon dioxide and gets really, really hot. And then it burns up at 1,000 degrees Celsius. And that is a shooting star. So finally, I wanted to ask you whether you have any advice for someone at home who might not be sure whether STEM is for them. Absolutely. Well, the answer is probably yes, if they're interested in it. And like a lot of people have a passion for STEM when they're younger, they might wonder about the stars or they might, might love animals or plants. But STEM is so many different things, not just science, technology, engineering and maths, but it, it means things like saving our planet. It means solving the problems of endangered species and, and climate change and, and health and medicine and saving lives. So it's so many things. And if you're interested in pretty much anything in the whole world or even the universe, I reckon STEM's for you. It's everywhere. It is. Thank you so much for coming on the show. <laughs> Pleasure, Lee.